maybe you from the 1970s when the Los Angeles Rams was known as the Prison Forsum because of that defensive line. Or maybe you were in the city of St. Louis, the gateway to the Midwest, where the greatest show on turf brought home the first ever Super Bowl championship. Or maybe you in the here and now with the Rams back in LA, winners of Super Bowl 56. You can rock Eric Dickinson. You can rock Marshall Fowl, Isaiah Bruce, and Kurt Warner. Or maybe you rocking Cooper Cup, Aaron Donnay, and Matthew Stafford. It doesn't matter, but when it comes to this, it's all about the Los Angeles Rams. Horns up, Rams house. Time to talk Rams football. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Ramley Talk. Ladies and gentlemen, Ram Nation, what's good? What's good, Ramley? You know, it's a Thursday. It is September 14th, which you know means it's time to talk Rams football. You know your host down in the Playmaker Silence. We're going to recap week one, uh, an impressive week one, by the way. And then we're going to preview this week's upcoming game with a certain team in California. Okay. But first and foremost, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Thank you for watching on whatever podcast directory you are listening to, whether it be Apple, Google, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, even going on YouTube and watching the video. I really appreciate it. I really, really appreciate the love and support for Rambly Talk as we talk about today. Now. Let's get started. We got I got a couple of news and notes that I want to talk about real quick. So let's jump right into it. Cooper Cup Los Angeles Rams joined forces with renowned chefs to raise funds for the Los Angeles Regional Food Bank and combating food insecurity. This was two days ago, back on the 12th, when this article was written on the LA Rams uh, app. If you if you're a Rams fan, get that Los Angeles Rams app. You get all the news, the notes that you need. So this is where I get mine from. So the article says here the eighth annual Taste of the Rams event has raised almost two hundred thousand dollars to provide essential assistance to families and individuals facing food insecurity in Los Angeles County. The funding will help the Los Angeles Regional Food Bank distribute hundreds of thousands of nutritious meals across LA County. So essentially uh, impacting the ongoing battle against hunger. Held at the Rio SoFi Stadium home to the Super Bowl 56 champions, Los Angeles Rams, this year's event guaranteed significant garnered significant support from Steadfast Food Bank's alliances, including Don Lee Farms and Bank of America. The fourth consecutive year, the Food Bank partnered with the Rams wide receiver Cooper Cup, who serves as the event's honorary chair and was Going back to 2001, the offensive, offensive NFL Offensive Player of the Year, Super Bowl 56 MVP, has supported the local efforts to combat food insecurity alongside the food bank and numerous round players, cheerleaders, and front office staff. He has also a food bank in the Yonkamas and Richland areas in his home state of Washington. Cooper Cup says, my family and I are happy to partner up with the LA Regional Food Bank again this year to continue our mission to provide meals in our community as we strive to address food insecurity in Los Angeles. Knowing how much of a difference a meal can make to those in need and being able to hopefully inspire others to help meet the needs of people living with food insecurity around the country is something my family is very passionate about. Close quote. Even though we don't have Cooper Cup until about week five, because he's on the IR list, so he missed the first week and missed last week, he'll miss this week and the next two games. It's good to see that he's doing work in the community, continue doing what he does outside of football. Very good to see. Love what they are doing. Very good cause. I love with I love when athletes, no matter what sport it is, they give back to the community, whether it's the community they play in or where they came from. As long as you give back to the community, that's all we can ask for. Because you know you wouldn't got here without help. So that's good to know. That's good. That's number one. My other one for the day, before we take our first break. Los Angeles Rams and Born X Rays announced 
Capsule Collection Anticipation of 2023 Home Opener. In anticipation of the ran of the Los Angeles Round 2023 Home Opener this weekend, the team has partnered with, with the iconic Los Angeles streetwear brand Born X Rise to release a capsule collection that will be available for purchase online at Ramsfanshop.com and BornXRace.com starting Friday tomorrow. September 15th at 12 p.m. Pacific time. If you live on the East Coast like I do, that's 3 p.m. Eastern time while supplies last. The collection also will be available for purchase in the team store, the equipment room at SoFi Stadium on Sunday, September 17th for fans attending the, the game this Sunday. Marking the third merchandise collaboration between the Rams and Born X Rays, this partnership underscores their shared devotion to the city of Los Angeles while continuing the legacy of Born X Rays co-founder Chris Pen Penup, who tragically passed away this June. Born and raised in Los Angeles, a longtime Rams fan, Penup was resolute in telling the real story of LA and its community through his brand. This capsule praise tribute to Penup's Affections for LA, highlighting Born as race signature, iconogram, videographic, and a special nod to the Rams 1999 and 2021 Super Bowl championships. The Rams and Born X Rays announced their cut up so collection this morning with a one minute short film that captures the SoFi Stadium field crew painting the lines and midfield logo. The film concludes with a zoom out shot to reveal the field painted with the Rams and Born X Rays logo locked up at the 50 yard line. Home opener. You got a little partnership going on? Like it. I love it. Now, I'm not, I haven't never been to LA. I need to get to LA at some point in time in my life to see how LA is and catch me a home game at SoFi Stay. But in due time. But nevertheless, I like what the Rams doing. I like this. I like how they paying tribute to the man who created this, who tragically passed away. My thoughts and prayers go out to that family. I was sudden passing this past summer. And the Rams are home opening home opener with that right there. I love it. Now, quick break right here. And then when we come back, we got to recap week one. An oppressive week one at that. The Playmakers Bar is proudly sponsored by Fanatics. Fanatics, the number one shop where sports fans across the world love to get their sports gear and fan them all. A wide selection of gears from every league, including the NFL, MLB, NBA, NHL, the NCAA, and of course, the WWE. But it is football, basketball, baseball, hockey, even soccer, golf, no matter what sport it is, there is sports appeal for every fan of every sport. Fanatics, with sports fan shop and efficient license everything. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Ramley Talk. That she just saw it. Our sponsor is Fanatics. Shout out to Fanatics right now. Fanatics gave you all the great sales on efficient license everything with Fanatics. So. Don't miss out on any good stuff going on with Fanatics, ladies and gentlemen. And as of right now, as I am on the Fanatics website, looking it up, right now they have 65% off site while using the promo code CAMP. C A M P CAMP. C up to 65% off site while on Fanatics right now. And you have 12 hours the rest of this day to get some shopping done for whatever team you love, especially if you're lost. Rams fan. Now that we did that, we got that out. Let's recap what took place up at the Pacific Northwest when the Rams opened the season at the place where the season ended at last year, and that is with the Seattle Seahawks. Now going to this game, ladies and gentlemen, those of you who've been following me through my preseason uh, prediction sec, you know, shows that I have done every year, 
leading up to the Rams schedule. I picked the Seahawks to beat us because the season ended there. Then you got to go back to begin the season. A lot of host of changes happen. You know, Geno Smith got his back. They look to be better and all this other stuff. I couldn't have been more wrong in a day in my life, and I am happy to be wrong because the Rams walked into the Pacific Northwest and gave it to the Seattle Seahawks by the score of 30 to 13, ladies and gentlemen. And we all know what happened. We all talked about it in all the in all our groups, especially on Facebook with all the Rams groups, as you can see here. By the way, they outscored the Seattle Seahawks 23 to 0 in the second half. 23 to 0 in the second half, and we are in Seattle here, okay? We're talking at Seattle, not in Los Angeles, at Seattle. Matthew Stafford, hell of a game. 24 for 38, 334 yards passing. He did not get sacked one time. He didn't throw a touchdown, but it's all good because touchdowns came on the ground. You know, Karen Royals, 15 carries, 52 yards, two touchdowns. Can't make his 22 carries, 29 yards, a touchdown. We didn't run the ball effectively, but we kept running it. 40 carries. 40 carries. Sean McVay was not abandoning the not been in the run. Matthew stepped through the ball 38 times. You ran the ball 40 times. Talk about balance. Okay. Even though the passing game pretty much tripled the running game, it's the fact that he ran the ball 40 times. Sean Mayfay called 40 run plays. He was not stopping. Okay. Which I love. I love the fact Sean Mayfay did not stop running the football. He kept it running. Okay. And then speaking of passing, Tutu Atwell, six catches, 119, 19.8 average on eight targets. Our fifth round draft pick, pick 177, Puka Nakua, 10 catches, 119, 11.9 uh, average on 15 targets. This is the first time in Rams history that two receivers – under the age of, I think it's either 23 or 25, something like that. Both went over 100 yards in the same game. And they both had the same amount of yards. More than 19 each. Gotta love it. Gots to love it. I mean, there's nothing else you can say. But let's go into the statistics here. The Rams control time possession, 39. 39 minutes to the Seahawks, 20 and a half minutes. Dominate. Both teams had nine total drives, 78 plays for the Rams to 46 of the Seahawks. That is 32 more plays with the same amount of drives. Mm -mm -mm. The Rams were able to sustain drives while the Seahawks could not sustain drives. That means that defense played a hell of a game. Look at the total yards. 426 for the Rams, 180 for the Seahawks. Complete and utter domination on both sides of the ball. You already know about the rushing attack. Rams ran for 92. Seahawks ran for 85. 85. They was averaging 4.7 yards a carry. They just, but they can't get nothing going. Pass the game. Rams threw for 334 yards. Seahawks threw for 95 yards. Okay. It complete dominant. Geno Smith. Let me give you Geno Smith. I should have had it on here, but I didn't. My bad. But let me give you Geno Geno Smith's statistics, okay? This is what Geno Smith did in his home opener after getting his contract and winning comeback player of the year. 16 for 26, 112 yards passing with one touchdown. Kenneth Walker the third for, for those of you who love running backs. 12 carries, 64 yards. DK Metcalf, three catches, 47 yards, and the one touchdown. Tyler Lockett only had two catches for 10 yards. They first round draft pick Jetson Smith Najiba, three catches for 13 yards. I was, I was worried about the young defense, but the young defense proved me wrong. Because check this out. In the second half, zero points given up, 12 total yards, and one first down by the Rams defense. You got half a sack from Aaron Donald. Hodgson, our two, our two rookie draft picks in Kobe Turner and Bryce Young. 
It was meetings in the backfield in the second half. At one point in time, they, they caught Geno's mic when he saw Aaron Donald come free, and he said, oh, my God, and threw the ball away. That's been that's been the thing when they when they talk to Seattle this whole week, and nobody and, and to be honest, man, um, nobody's blaming you, Gino, because I'm pretty sure everybody would say the same thing. With if they see 99 and right coming scot free, out of anybody you you don't want to see come scot free, it is number 99 in Rams. Okay, you don't want him coming scot free. That's just terrible. But that's what happened. They got to him. They made it uncomfortable for Gino. Gino couldn't do anything. No, Gino, no. You couldn't do anything, sir. And that's how it went. But Gino Smith and the Seattle Seahawks in the second half. It, crazy to think about. But that's literally what happened. So, I mean, you can look at it however you want to look at it, but that's how it went. Shout out to the defense, man. Shout out to the defense. And I love what uh, Matthew Stafford said in the locker room. I'm not going to say it word for word because I don't do that. But those of you who are watching on YouTube, you see the quote. But I'm going to paraphrase the quote for those who listen to the audio. Whatever the outside world thought this was going on inside, they have no clue. That's pretty much what Stafford said. The outside world can say whatever. When he And the fact that he said it is because people were talking about how his wife came on came on her podcast and put out there that Matthew Stafford is having a hard time with connected with the young with the young talent. Okay. And then other people out here saying the Rams are tanking. They're not they're not they just they're just preparing for the future and whatnot and all this other stuff. And then Matthew Stafford comes out. Two two at well 119 yards receiving. Puka Nakua, 119 yards receiving. And was without Cooper Cup. Remember, we don't have, we not gonna see Cooper Cup till week five. And Magic Style is still through four for 300 yards in Seattle. So y'all get out of here with that, man. Y'all get out of here with that bull job, okay? We ain't trying to see that. Here's another thing I want y'all to realize what took place in week one and why week one was so impressive, the most impressive thing people seen in week one. This one, Angel Siciliano, for those of you who know Angel Siciliano, works for NFL Network and is one of our and is one of our lead broadcasters for the Rams, especially during the preseason. Only two NFL teams had 400 plus yards of total offense so far in week one. The Miami Dolphins, who did against the Los Angeles Chargers out in LA, and the Los Angeles Rams against the Seattle Seahawks against at with 419. Both of those teams won. Okay. Both of those teams won, all right? So, good job, Rams. Great job. But before we get to our next commercial break, we have the Ram Player of the Week. The fan vote has been done with 48% of the votes going to this guy. The the fan Ram Nation has spoken. Ramley has spoken, and it is the Ricky Puka Nakua gets the Ram Player of the Week. As we said, ten catches, one hundred and nineteen yards, eleven point nine average in his first ever NFL game. This is what he did against a the division of foe. On the road, by the way. Puka Nakua, congratulations. Ram Nation, see what you did against Seattle. They appreciate what you did, and they gave you the love. Okay? So you got it. You came in first with 48% of the votes. Second was Matthew Stafford with 32% of the votes. Okay? The other options were Kenyon Williams, Tutu Atwell. The offensive line got some love. The defense, the entire defense got some love. But most of the love goes to the Ricky Puka Nakua. Congratulations. You are the Ram Player of the Week. Take a break when we come back. We got to preview week two. And week two is that team in Santa Clara for our home opener.
the Playmakers blog is sponsored by Paramount Plus. Paramount Plus. Mountains of entertainment. So much, so much to stream. From shows and movies you can only catch here on Paramount Plus. Whether it be from CBS, BET, Comedy Central, Liquid Loading, and so much more. The new home of Showtime. Watch Showtime original series, movies, and sports when you sign up for Paramount Plus with Showtime. Catch exclusive originals from Paramount Plus such as Star Trek, Strange Wars, The Family Stallones, Halo, and so much more. You also can stream live sports like NFL on CBS, the UEFA Champions League, the Masters, and the SEC on CBS. Paramount Plus, you can stream up to three devices when you create an account. So Paramount Plus, plan starts at $5.99. If you hit that link below, you can get a free trial. Paramount Plus, mountains of entertainment. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of Into the Net FC. Killing it, Bappe just all of a sudden finally understood his role, and I think he finally understood that everything Killing it, Bappe has accomplished already, you know, there is still a hell of a lot of wait, waiting for him in the future. Killing it, Bappe is only 24 years old. He has accomplished so much, and you know what? Kylian Mbappe has not even reached his prime. I'm finally seeing, you know, the Marcus Rashford we have been hoping for for such a long time, you know. But, you know, this game, you know, after after everything Manchester United has been, you know, doing lately, you know, th this was actually the ultimate test, you know, to see if Manchester United, you know, all, honestly was all of a sudden for real. I, I explain this. The United States, maybe they have to suffer this loss as a lesson to learn to prepare for the future. Because four years from now, the World Cup is in not one, not two, but three countries. The United States of America, Canada, and Mexico. Into the Net FC is available on all streaming platforms, including Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, and YouTube. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Ramley Talk here. Special shout out to my boy, Isaac Azaf, for all any of my soccer fans that are Rams fans. Into the Net into the net, LC is the shocker show for you. He covers it all: Premier League, UEFA League, Champions League, uh, FIFA, uh, the FIFA World Cup. He covers it all. So if you love soccer, Into the Net LC, check it out on all streaming platforms. Those of you who seen our first commercial, Paramount Plus, yes, Paramount Plus is five ninety nine, but but for the next six days, ladies and gentlemen, you can get Paramount Plus. For two dollars and fifty cents for one whole year for 12 months. If you go on there and you use the promo code sports, S P O R T S Sports. Take advantage of it. It's a great streaming platform. You can catch everything that you saw on the commercial with Paramount Plus. Six days left. Use it now. Half off for one whole year. That is two dollars and fifty cents a month to stream Paramount Plus. All you gotta do is use the promo code Sports S P O R T S. All right. So it's at the bottom of the ticket right here. That's all you need. Link is in the show notes, so you can click on it. Go ahead, get it. Two dollars and fifty, two dollars and fifty cents a month for one year. Man, you can't beat that. All right. But now, ladies and gentlemen, we must prepare for week two. Week two is the home opener. And the home market is against that team in Santa Clara. Now, I got a friend of, that's a fan of this team that's probably going to cuss me out because I would not say their name and I would not say their name until he started hearing respect on other teams' name. But that's neither here nor there. But yes, it's the nightmare of the Los Angeles Rams as the home opener. All right. So let's go ahead and dive into it. Let's not waste any time. All right. Last week, they went to the still city of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and they put a beating on the Pittsburgh Steelers. They just call it what it is. They put a beating on the Pittsburgh Steelers. 30 to 7. It was ugly, okay? It was ugly. Brock Purdy is fully healthy. 19 for 29, 220 yards passing, two touchdowns. Christian McCaffrey, 22 carries, 152 yards and a touchdown. 
Brandon IU, eight catches, 129, two touchdowns. Debo had a so so game with only five catches and 59 yards. But three catches. Look, and they still beat them 30 to 7. Pittsburgh. You know, this outside of Philly, Dallas, this team right here is a team to be working with in the NFC. We all know this. We knew this going into the season. We knew this for the longest time, okay? Because this is the team who has been destroying us for years now, okay? And it continue on. They held they held the ball for 37 minutes to Pittsburgh's 22 minutes. I mean, the drives are similar, 12 to 11, 66 to 61 total plays. The yard is still 391 for that team in the red and burgundy, and the Steelers had 239. It was just ugly for the Steelers. Nothing they can do. Passing yards 203 for that team, 198 for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Rushing yards, good gracious. They ran. They have. A, they ran the ball for 188 yards, and Pittsburgh only won the ball for 41. I mean, whatever you look at, it was domination from start to finish. I mean, and the play that set the tone is very simple. Fred Warner put Najee Harris down on his head. That was it. As soon as that play happened, everybody knew who was winning the game. Everybody knew it was that. Praying and simple. This, this, this defense, don't, you can change the coordinators all you want. This defense is just that defense, man. Nick Bosa's back. He ain't even do much. He just got back. He, He's still trying to get back in shape and whatnot, but he got his money. So, I mean, I don't know what to do, man. I, I really don't. This defense. The offense is just, just don't know. And the when We just can't beat this team. Like they beat us eight straight times. I mean, those of you who are who are watching on YouTube, you see all the results for the eight straight regular season games. I mean, and what? Only what? Two of the eight was close. We're talking what? Twenty December twenty first, twenty nineteen, when they won thirty four thirty one over us. We're talking what? November 29, 2022, 23 to 20. I remember that game. We actually supposed to win that game, but it didn't happen. Uh, we have a third one here. It's like what? January 9th, 2021, 27 to 24. But last year, the last the two last season, it was ass whoopings handed out to us. October 3rd, 24 to 9. Hmm, excuse me. 24 to 9. Okay. Then we talking a little technical difficulties here, but I got you. And then October 30th, like th three weeks later, 31 to 14. They've been whooping our ass. And I'm tired of getting my ass whipped by this team. But I don't know what we can do to stop getting my ass kicked by them. I don't know. I have no answers. I hope, Sean McVay should have, I, hope he, I hope he found something. I hope he found something because if we go back to my preseason when I previewed this game, you see all the statistics yet again. 13-4 last year, NFC West champion, second in the NFC. Defeated Seattle in the wild card round, defeated the Cowboys in the divisional round before getting beat by the Eagles in the NFC Championship game, where they didn't have a damn quarterback. Jimmy G's no longer there. 
But you have Brock Purdy, you have Chris McCaffrey, Debo Samuel, Brandon IU, Joyce Kittle. I just, the defensive line added Javon Hargraves to that defense, along with Kalon Fellin to that defense. Even though the Michael Ryan's left and Jimmy Garoppolo left and all these other people left, it didn't matter. Uh, that right here, the defensive player here that says Nick Bosa is currently hard or not, they ain't, that's no longer that's no longer in Crescent no more. Uh, clear for all football team, Brock Purdy, and he took and he torched the Pittsburgh still in secondary. I have no answers, man. And then when I made my preseason prediction, I picked the 49ers to win. Just like I did Seattle, but Seattle was surprised. I, Sean McVay going to have to show me something to, to get me to believe that we can beat San Francisco 49ers. I have, I'm sitting here trying to think, what can we do to finally end this horrendous, horrendous streak that we have with this damn team in Santa Clara? I have no answers, okay? If anything, we're just going to have to outwill them to the point where we just get a lucky bounce our way to beat them. Because in that NFC Championship game, we outwilled them. Aaron Donald was not taking no for an answer that game. That's why he did what he did to make sure that game got closed by him in the NFC Championship game that led to Jimmy Garoppolo throwing the interception. We're just going to have to have more hearts uh, than that team in red and gold, okay? Burgundy and gold, whatever they want to call themselves. I don't want to say they damn name. I'm sick of them. But I have no idea what we can do. I, I really don't. I hope I'm wrong. They proved me wrong in week one, which makes me happy. Because them, I feel good now. But this, this one, oh. I just don't know. I really don't know. But that's going to do it for Ramley Talk on today, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for tuning in. If you're listening to us on Apple, leave us a rate and review. Let me know how you enjoying Ramley Talk, what you appreciate about it. And if there's any criticism you want to put out there, go ahead. I'll, I'll read the criticism and see if I can approve on it and whatnot. With anything else, subscribe, like, follow Ramley Talk, subscribe to the Playmakers blog. Facebook, Facebook, YouTube, X, I guess, instead of Twitter. Instagram, we all around. So keep up to date with us. And we love keeping up to date with y'all. Thank y'all who voted for the Ram Player of the Week. Appreciate the participation on everybody from every Rams group. I really feel the love. I really feel appreciated. Until next time, to recap week two and prepare for our first primetime game of the season, I'm the Playmaker signing off. I will catch y'all next week. Thank you for tuning in to Ramley Talk. Ramley Talk is sponsored by Fanatics, Lids, and Paramount Plus. Get your favorite sports appeal with Fanatics or Lids, and get great streaming service with Paramount Plus. If you want to donate to the program, you can donate to us via Cash App. Dollar sign D Playmakers. That is again dollar sign D Playmakers. And remember, you can follow and subscribe to Ramley Talk on all podcast directories, including Apple, Google, Spotify. Amazon Music and YouTube. And those of you who are on Apple, leave us a great review, leave comments on how you feel about Ramley Talk and the episode that you listen to. Tune in again next time for more Ramley Talk hosted by the Playmaker.